Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, European crossover webinar. We've had a, a nice uh, rally back here in the in the euro dollar. We have had uh, a little bit of news overnight, but uh, the the main crux of the news is going to go on and be when we get the employment cost index. We also have um, in the U.S. session shy PMI. As also as well as uh, University of Michigan going to be uh, today, but we can go on and move into the. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much. Uh, too much time on the news. On the news overnight, uh, we're also going into month in, so that's going to have uh, somewhat of an effect you know, on the markets. So let's just go on and move in. We're we're coming actually into uh, a 38% retracement here on the year dollar. So we can actually go and move into the 30 minute before we go on and move in to the uh, two hour charts. I'm not going to focus on train, you know, the, the, the same as I did yesterday. That was because one of the uh, uh, listeners had asked me to go with that that, that information. Uh, so it's just one of those situations we're just going to go into. It's just an overview of the markets, essentially. Uh, that's it. So I'm not going to be focusing on um, on trying to do uh, you know any any teaching type seminars we did yesterday. But uh, here we are on the euro dollar. And we've had a nice uh, rebound here. After yesterday, we'd come into some uh, critical support here, at least as far as uh, FIB levels. We'd uh, come into the 61%, which was sort of the uh, low move down here at uh, 808. You can see how much time we'd spend down there last week, uh, up to the high up here, which is actually 1129. I have it as 1128. And then uh, we also came into the 78%, but actually the market bottomed out when uh, we came right into the uh, 88%. There was actually also support here, as you can go and see, right here at the 898. Market got a little bit of overdone, but uh, that's the way markets will go on and play themselves out. Uh, we've actually come into right here, we're getting ready to test the 38%. This 38% is going to be of yesterday's low of 8.93 to the most recent high here, swing high of 11.29. And we discussed yesterday about the exponential moving averages uh, and how we go on in, or how I go on and use those, basically just to keep me in the right direction of the market. And uh, we've spoken about how we've been on the sell signal throughout this entire run actually stayed in the, in the sell signal until we actually uh, flipped it to a buy at about 9.22. So generated that sell signal once we we uh, had failed here at the uh, bias pivot, which is 10.58. I know on a longer term uh, chart, well, we were talking about 9.28, but I'm talking about on the 30-minute uh, that 10.58 had been a bias pivot. Okay, so as we came down here to 929 yesterday, I came on to the uh, webinar uh, with uh, Pipsar advising that we had some pretty good support here at 926 area. And we did get a, a nice little bounce, I think almost up to 955, I believe it was, before the market uh, reasserted its down move for the morning. Uh, but we did go on and flip in here to the buy. And the, the the momentum had gone and changed here. We took one last dip in the uh, overnight session, but we got a nice little hammer bottom. But we are coming into some resistance here at the 983, which is also going to confluence with the 38% of this move from 893, as I indicated, to uh, yesterday's low to 1129. So I would expect the market to go and probably back off a little bit. We do have the employment cost index, and that's going to be a concern in the sense of if you're trying to go in and sell the dollar, because if, if we do start to see that number ratchet up, it's probably going to go on and obviously going to uh, 
increase the, the percentages that the Fed goes and takes action in September, which would be a boost to the dollar. Now we're getting a nice rebound here in the euro, and I think it has a little bit to do with month end also because we discussed that uh, when the uh, the the uh, once we got past the when when uh, Greece had resolved its situation or decided to go and and go with the uh, with the uh, the program and they still had to go on and get votes through Parliament is that the, the market had basically lost its steam and uh, the market had been on, on quite a down move and that's what we had seen here and uh, that's where the market basically sat there in the 820s we had a nice little rebound but we've uh, re, you know gone and fallen back post FOMC but I think that at this point the market got a little bit oversold so this probably just is just it's probably just a little a light unwind of positions, but once again, I think that the market will eventually go on and, and work itself lower. So, uh, but the risk is going into uh, employment cost index is that we could see this uh, year dollar going and and pull back. Uh, we may find some support here, which is probably going to be around this 938, 936 area, but it certainly looks like right now they're going to, um, you know covering some of these shorts here at these lower levels. Because we've had a pretty nice little run, if you think about it, from where we, we had, you know, we were talking about, you know, getting short the market up here. And I was even surprised on the initial run that we made up here to the 1129. Uh, we were initially, or at least I was initially faded here in the 70s, but I was scalping it. So I came out okay, and we made this dip. As if you remember, I exited out all of my position, or I tweeted that out with the exception of one eighth, and I was going to, uh, uh, exit the last of that in the 50s and sure enough we got a nice pullback in the 50s before we reasserted the upside move and got up here and there was some nice fibs in here a confluence of two major fibs and then we got this nice run down here in the market and of course uh, FOMC came into play and the market uh, that statement was certainly uh, certainly not dollar bearish so the market uh, quickly started to slide and we lost uh, the momentum certainly went in that direction and then we basically just tested it and right now we just hit the 38 percent I would look for the market to go on and run into some trouble in here maybe even give some back uh, some of its gains before the employment cost index so if you pay this market uh, long this mor uh, morning then this is certainly a good area to really tighten up your stops and uh, Unless we, you know, like I said, it's going to be month in, but certainly the risk, I believe, is going to be uh, uh, to the downside for the euro as we come into the employment cost index. I think what we've done is probably blown out some weak shorts here that may have come in uh, very late, and but we are here at a key level, and certainly the risk uh, going into the U.S. session is going to be for the euro to go in and pull back. So we can go on and uh, move here into the uh, two-hour chart. So as you see, we're, we're just moving right into the lower part of this zone that I have here from 984 to 1115. And you can see how key this zone has been right here, the 984, 1115. And I've had people ask me why I color this in. And uh, I do that because it makes it, uh, it's visually easier for me to see these zones, how they want to play out. And sometimes when you get a market that's moving quite fast, and you see it falling out from an area or moving into an area, I can, once I see that it's going into a zone, I, I, I kind of get my perspective changes. It changes to as far as the market falling down, is it now we've just engaged into a zone? And then I look at things from the perspective of that zone. You can see here, I've mentioned so many times, time after time, is that when you move into these zones quite often, you'll get a, re, uh, a reaction from the 50% of the zone Essentially what we happened here, right here at this 820 area that we had last week. So when this market gets a little bit overdone here, or not overdone, but the market gets on its bias, uh, 
you know, momentum, which as it did this morning, I look at the market, it obviously, as I said, at, eight, eight, at 983, we got the 38% of yesterday's move of 893 to the most recent swing high of 1129. But if we didn't have that, then I already say, you know what, I, go, I expect the market to run into a little bit of difficulty because we're coming into this zone, uh, which is, as I said, 984 to 1115. And actually, it's that same zone that I used uh, to go in and sell the market up here. And I already had this level up here uh, before we even got to that. Remember, the high was 1129, and I already had this level uh, snaked out here at 1128. So it gives me what these zones give me. They give me a, a, an overall perspective of where I think the market's going to go. When I say overall perspective, is so that I don't get uh, swung about or uh, flipped around based on where the market is moving on a very short-term basis. You know, you hit some buy stops uh, here where they blow out some shorts and the market gets overdone, and uh, sometimes you may go on and find yourself playing into that action and either buying into it or getting skunked out of your, you know, any shorts you may have come in. So when I see this come into, uh, when I see the market come into a zone, then it flips it for me. I'm, thinking, okay, where where's the market potentially going to go and have some trouble? And you know what? We're moving into this zone. Let's give this an overall perspective where the market can go to. So my next level above here is 10.04 uh, right here, at least for the four-hour chart. And then I look across and see, okay, well, I see a lot of uh, action here, which gives me an idea of, you know, volume and where we may start to see a lot of two-way action. So when the market... Uh, it's going in one direction. It's since I primarily day trade and scalp. Uh, if uh, I was trading in this in this area, the market were to skunk up to 10, 10 even or just a little bit above 10 even, I may be taking the other side of the trade and just hitting it back and forth. I have gone and put a small little short here at that 38%. Uh, once again, I think the risk is for a fade going into employment cost index. But that's what I'm saying is if you've been playing it long this morning. Uh, based on the momentum of the 30 minute of the 30 minute chart and we'll swing back in there then sort of you can go on and see we've had that momentum for the you know going higher which kind of gave you an indication that that you want to play it from the long side or you want to go and be a buyer on any any dips and uh, certainly we got that here. We got this nice hammer bottom. So you already know that the momentum is basically working for you. So at that point, you're going to go and engage your longs. And then, of course, then we have our resistance here. We came up here into this 960 area. And the market got just a little bit above it. We pulled right back down. This is before we even got hit that, that bottom here. But we come up here this 960, we pull back down. The momentum's still to the upside, so you want to play it from that direction. And then we're moving into this key zone. And on the 30 minute, I have is 974 to 1115. But this 983 is just above the market. You can see some nice touches in here. And then we've got the 38%. So then I would expect, and then when you look at the overall context of Coming into some potentially good U.S. data, we've got the Shy PMI, we've got the University of Michigan, uh, which I think we can see a nice little rebound in the University of Michigan, uh, and then of course employment cost index, the risk there. I, then I believe that uh, that bodes for the market potentially going to run out of gas up here. Uh, if we don't, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really that worried about it. I think that uh, we are overdone here in the year dollar, so you have to go and be cognizant of that. But I, at this point, I wouldn't even mind adding on to my position uh, if I were to go and keep the position. Uh, because, like I said, overall, I believe that the euro is going to still be on the weak weak side. Uh, the only thing that, that the um, where the euro is going to have an advantage is, is where the dollar may be overdone. So if the employment cost index were to come in weak or we get some weak, uh, weak shy PMI, also some weak University of Michigan, that may allow the euro dollar to go and even work higher. But once again, like I told you, I feel a lot more comfortable selling euro. Um, and I just think that we've hit, we're, we're still pretty much overdone. I just think that from a very ultra short term day trade perspective that the risk is a at these levels is going to be for a little bit of a pullback going into employment cost index.
so let's go on and move into some other charts. So the dollar cab is still holding up relatively well, and we're getting you know a bit of a dichotomy here where the year dollar is getting against the dollar, and the year dollar, you know, as as I've advised y'all before, it uh, the the cash dollar index uh, is comprised fifty six percent by the by the year dollar. So it's what a lot of people call eurocentric. That's why, as I've mentioned before, on an intraday basis. I really just don't keep that much attention to the cash dollar index because it is so Eurocentric. But when you look at it, here's the cash dollar index fading, but here's the dollar CAD pretty close to its highs. And this has a lot to do with what's happening here in the crude oil market. As you can see, we've had this, you know, the market finally broke out of this downtrend line and we got scooting and that came into that area that we were looking at. That was the 78% that I've talked about from 42.40 to 62.58 and the market was able to get past that. And we talked about this market when we got down here, the market was, you know, somewhat oversold. But that being said, even though we, we hit that 78% uh, that the market was still going to have a little bit of trouble because the, the, the environment was overwhelmingly bearish. It's basically the same thing and I, I exampled that. It's the same thing that the euro had at uh, 820 last month, uh, last week where once it got so low and, and the sentiment so bearish that the market couldn't pick itself up. But we did go on and break this trend line, which allowed us, and I had, had advised about that, we probably see some at least decent short covering, you know, some short covering just to work off the oversold, which we got a, a nice a nice bounce. Think about it. Uh, you know, it's almost close to $3, you know, from the low, basically like about, about like $2.70 or whatever. Uh, doesn't look like much in the overall context of this big down move. But we talked about the support that we were getting here at 48.66, and the market tried to go in and launch off of that, and that actually weakened dollar CAD yesterday. But since then, we've reasserted our downtrend line, and it probably has a lot to do with obviously the end of the week. No one's stepping in. They probably would have liked to have seen the year, uh, the crude oil get past this 49.50, make a run to 50. The idea that we didn't, and then it's it's also going to be the end of the week as well as month end. Uh, no one wants to fight it, and then there goes the market sliding right back down. Well, that obviously translated into a higher dollar CAD, which uh, gives us the levels that we're at this morning, even though when you look at the dollar overall, it's a mixed picture. And when you look at the cash dollar index, which I said is Eurocentric, then um, you'll see the cash dollar index under pressure and actually working towards the slows of the day but you got a dollar cat still hanging up here so this isn't so much a dollar move as it is a crude oil move in light of what's going on with crude oil so uh, once again here we are back at that uh, key weekly level of 3065 and we did go on a hit and we talked about this yesterday and even before then, this, this trend line up here, and we'd come down here and test this trend line. I would have expected the market still, though, to make a move towards this 28.25. And, you know, once, you know, like I said, it's the end of the week, month in flows. Uh, probably nobody wants to go on and, and fight that crude oil trend. So we'll see what, what Dollar CAD does. Uh, and we'll see how things play out after the employment cost index. But if crude can start to, uh, pick itself up off the bottom early next week, then uh, maybe this will allow dollar CAD to go and pull back a little bit. And if that is the case, then I would expect this to go on and make this move down to 128. Because if we do go on in, and after we've set this high, I think the market would have been satisfied to dip down into the low 28s and, and bounce. 
Well, we barely even te barely even pull back much, although we did come into these two key fibs right in here, and then the market actually even uh, kissed the trend line here. But if we were to run out of gas here, and this would basically be a double top, if that were to come into fruition as early as next week, then you would see a more extensive pullback, and then you'd be looking more towards 2750 for the market to go on and pull back. If we run out of gas up here, we're not going to really know that until next week. But if crude can, you know, finally start to pick itself up off the bottom next week and the dollar can has any trouble up here, then I think that's where ultimately we'll go before the market going, can go on and reassert itself back up to the upside. So let's go on and move in here to the, to the dollar yen. And we've talked about this and, and the do, and dollar yen's inability to go in and pull back much further. It's almost reminiscent or almost indicative of what we've the, the type of action that we've seen here in the uh, uh, dollar CAD. And you know the market wasn't even able to even pull back to the 38%. So based on this dollar strength we've seen here, the market has gone and made another run up here. But uh, we've had some nice shooting stars up in here, and, and subsequently, and I pointed this out yesterday out on Twitter. I tweeted out a five-minute chart where we had just a beautiful graveyard doji, and so you can see how this has played out, and we've had a decent pullback here. If you're monitoring this market from a day trading perspective, you had a chance to go and make some very nice money. I haven't, as I said, I haven't tweeted out that five-minute chart uh, and we've had a very nice pullback, went went sub sub 24, but we we've gone and popped back up here. Uh, one of the things that came across the wires uh, from BOJ's Corota, he says uh, the BOJ uh, going to swing back into that. So running right here. BOJ uh, still sees weak yen as beneficial for the economy. So that's going to go on and provide a boost for dollar, dollar yen. So BOJ, the Bank of Japan, sees weak yen beneficial for the economy, happy with the yen fall as long as the pace is moderate. So that's really going to give that boost to the dollar, dollar yen. And, and the inability of the dollar yen to pull back any further, we talked about, and we'll probably go over that next week, is a, a, a weekly level that I'm looking at. And I believe it's 2885, which is a, I can't remember. I'd have to look back because I haven't looked at it in a while. But I think that was like, uh, a, I believe it might be like a 78% of the the move from 75, 56 on up to, I think it's like 161. I'd have to get a look at it. I haven't bothered with it since then. I'll look at it over the weekend. Uh, Bank of Japan's Kuroda didn't intend to set cap on dollar yen with his June remark that yen's real effective foreign exchange rate is already very low, says sources. So um, once again, these are all uh, uh, very supportive for dollar yen. Also says the BOJ does not have a uh, Kuroda line, meaning where they want to stop weak uh, yen weakening. So these are key, you know, go, going forward in the potential move of where the dollar yen may go to. And with dollar yen, uh, inability to go and even pull back very far, very far, and then also with the idea with the Fed uh, looking to go and raise rates potentially as early as September. Well, that would probably go and give us a, a good leg up, leg up here. We had set that prior high at twenty five eighty five here, but uh, my overall target was uh, before I thought the market would run into trouble was twenty eight eighty five. Obviously, that'd be so close. To 130, that the market want, may want to go on and, and step in, and uh, may, market may actually may want to go on and tag that 130. But I'm just saying is that's why I think that you may want to start to see some uh, some trouble in there, uh, trouble in paradise. So we're coming up into the break time. So let's go on and catch ourselves a little bit of an early break. We'll be back in seven, seven minutes. I'll go on and uh, keep this here. And we'll catch you on the other side of the dial.
so as a, we've had this nice run up here in, in the spoos, but we have run out of gas uh, initially at this 2104 and a quarter, which I've got that actually highlighted on the 30 minute chart. And we did get a decent moderate pullback from this area here. But we've gone, the market's gone and made another run. We paired back just a hair and got back above it. Once again, I stated was that, you know, if you think about the FOMC statement, uh, I was thinking we might get a gift or the market may get to go and get a gift if there was concern with the Fed reaching its inflation target with the, the collapse that we've seen in, in energy prices. But the Fed uh, basically reasserted that they still expect to reach their inflation target. So uh, that actually, when we were live on the FOMC analysis uh, with uh, Blake Pipsar, uh, indicated this was not a dollar bear statement, and thus we got short the year dollar. Um, now, uh, as I said, we've, we've seen this uh, big collapse here in crude oil market. Uh, basically reasserting its downtrend, and we talked about how ugly this chart is. Uh, once we got past that 50, 67, even beyond it just being the, this being a, 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 an even number, the $50, the, the chart just looked absolutely terrible, and we're going to switch it in here into a four hour. When you look at this chart, it's just, like I said, you, markets that are going to go on and maintain or try and uh, reassert an upside, don't fall this far. You know, the most they're going to go and fall back is a 61% down here. Uh, and we had a, you know, pretty big extensive move. But when we lost that $50, and uh, it was pretty much all she wrote. And that's when uh, the market, the, the sentiment is going to go and remain bearish. And, you know, the thing that uh, really gets me here, you know, I was, um, in some ways, I have to say, I was the, the lone, the lone wolf, whatever the, I kept screaming about the, the, the frackers here as we made this move up to $60. Nobody cared that as we came up to these levels that you're going to see an increase of, the, of, of frackers back in the market. Everybody kept telling me $70, $75. I thought they were crazy. And, of course, once we started falling, then the, the thing really became undone. As I said, I thought we would have stopped here at the $54 and then seen a bounce. But... Um, we saw a lot of funds going and pull out of that market, and that's really what, what gave it the death now. And then since then, the focus has been on supply, supply, supply. Uh, but like I said, the, the, the sentiment is so overwhelmingly bearish, and, and this is what's contributed to the dollar CAD uh, going back to those levels. That being said, um, we're pulling a little bit away from the 3065. Uh, if crude can bottom itself this next week, which potentially would, from once again, just an oversold uh, nature, if we can steady ourselves here, we could start to see a market make a move back up to this 49.51 and get beyond that. And that may allow the dollar CAD to go on pullback. But that's to look at for next week. Uh, you're not going to go in and fight those Friday flows. But here we are uh, getting back here into the spoos. I just think that, you know, and you know me, I'm, I've been a big bull on the U.S. economy for a very, very, very long time, ever since I thought that, you know, the, the employment situation was going to change, and that's been in place now for 18 months worth of gains, good gains. So uh, that being said, I, I thought the key thing for me was how well the U.S. market had held up in the face of what was happening in Greece and in China, um, across the, and other markets too. And so the fact that it was doing so well, uh, that was my whole idea why I thought the market, there was a good chance for a good rebound. Uh, but I think it's rich up here. That's it. I'm not saying that we couldn't, that we still can't make eventually make new highs in a very short-term basis. Uh, and obviously, as well as, the, I think people are starting to acknowledge as well those the market held up in light of what I call the global maelstrom. And then when we start seeing better economic numbers uh, we can go and make that move up. But I just think that we're a little bit rich here. We're probably going to have to go on. Uh, my thinking is uh, we'll eventually have to pull down here to 2076. That's my target here. You see some very nice touches. And then from there, I think the market could really launch up and then make the new all-time highs ahead of the FOMC. We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, but that's just the kind of like idea of what I'd be positioning myself 
as far as any trades. Uh, but uh, that's what we have here. We're going to take also a look here on the 10-year note. We know the bonds have really been taken off, but here's what we got in the 10-year note. We've talked about this this uh, zone here, 26.24, 26.27. We did go in and find some nice support here at the 50% right here from 25.22 to this high of 27.09, and that was confluence here, right here with this nice level. I actually, should just go on and highlight that you can. It, it makes it, you can see it visually better right here. You see that nice, nice level right in here where the market um, is finding some good testing right here. You know, first it's going to go and be support, then it's going to be resistance, basically resistance up here. Now on the way back, it's going to go on and be support. And that's exactly what we got here. 26.13, market overshot it by just literally a hair, half of a tick. Uh, on the pullback, uh, we did go in and get past it, but you have to go with how the market closes on the bar. We closed up, you know, real solid. And, of course, the market reasserted itself from a momentum perspective. A little bit overdone here, and if you think about it on a short-term basis, when we look at our exponential moving averages, we did get a sell signal here. And the market moved lower. So what we're what we're looking at here now, right now the market's just it's just kissing it, the exponential moving averages. But you'd have to still give it to the to the bears. So in this particular situation, you're looking at areas to go in and fade. So once again, while it remains in the sell signal, you'd have been selling it up here against this zone, anywhere in this zone, which we've seen a decent little pullback. We'll have to see how it all comes with the employment cost index. As I mentioned, we've got shy PMI. University of Michigan, but uh, like I said, that's why I like to use the exponential moving averages. Essentially, they just keep me on the right side of the market. I don't use them for uh, an outright buy or sell. I just use, our, as I said, I go in and look at my levels and my fibs, uh, and then I myself have my own interpretation on how I see economic data. Everybody's different. There's many ways to go and trade a market. Some people only look at technicals. Some people may do a heavy emphasis on fundamentals. Um, I I look at the overall picture and what the market's outlook is, or what I should say, not so much the outlook, but what I consider the market's expectations. That's what the, what drives these markets are expectations. So I try and uh, look at the market's expectations. I'm primarily a technical trader, but I like to look at the expectations and then see how when the economic reports when they come in, how they uh, diverge either from those expectations or they're in line with those expectations allowing the market to continue to run or ultimately a market to begin to fade. Uh, I'm actually more of a, uh, I have a tendency to be more aggressive in that I'll fade areas. Um, so the, in a sense, like I said, this is the way that I go on and set up my trades. As I said, primarily a technical trader, but I do try and look at the overall picture, the economic picture, and not so much from reading fundamental data because I don't really care so much. I do care about the fundamental data, but that's not what the way I trade it. I trade it on expectations of what the market thinks and how the market is positioned. Uh, so let's go to move in here with the gold market, and gold remains, continues to remain quite under pressure. And as we move in towards, like I said, month in, the, you know, no one's going to step in the way of this gold market. It's it's just really a sick dog, and we saw here on the in recent uh, CFTC the funds are net short since the first time since 2006. So that's huge. So you know, my whole thought was, and someone was asking me about that, was that you know, even if you get a rally, that is so overwhelming that you know that they're they're going to basically quash. Any any type of rally you'd see in the gold. I mean, at this point, um, you can almost basically, you know, when it rallies, uh, sell it with impunity because you know there's so much momentum now to the downside. And I think even more so than just the general momentum is that anybody that was a gold bull, they've gone into hiding now, or what I say, they're now on their psychiatrist's couch. That everything that they had looked for. Uh, that what could be wrong, you know, high debt, uh, the dollar was supposed to be weak, uh, inflation was supposed to be run out of, you know, run out of control, and all these other factors that they would look at. And then the last bastion of hope that they had was Greece, and, and the market could even rally on Greece. So the sentiment is so overwhelmingly bearish that we have to move lower. And uh, on the way down here, 
I thought we would, uh, we'd been short or we were looking for the market position to be short. Great move all the way down. Uh, I thought the market would at least try and stabilize itself right here in this 37 area. But as I said, China came in uh, on the Asian session uh, on a Sunday evening and really knocked the stuffing out of it as they tried to bail out of their gold position. Uh, but we were looking for a thousand dollars before we got to this move, uh, because based on the the gold's inability to rally up at these areas, we've been talking about looking for a move to a thousand dollars by year in or the beginning of the new year. Now everybody in his dog, cat, sister, and uncle is looking for a thousand dollars, which which just makes sense. I mean, the the sentiment and the momentum is just overwhelmingly bearish here on this market. So that's what we have here in gold. I don't think anything really changes. Eventually we'll get a bounce. You know, we're probably going to go and make it make a run down to 1050 before we see some type of a measurable bounce. Uh, but I think it's pretty much in the cards that we're going to be heading down to a thousand, a thousand bucks. Uh, probably something like uh, you know, just go beyond a thousand, spook a few people, and then we can go on and see uh, a bit of a rally. And it's really just going to be a rally based on an oversold market. Provided you know we don't see anything epic, but nothing's nothing's really changed this market to, to start with. So uh, we're going to move it back in here into the um, into FX. Going to switch screens. And someone's asked me what was my take on Aussie dollar. You know, Aussie dollar is just, it's just weak. You just can't get around this market in the sense that, you know, here it is. It's, and really, this is more about month in flows. That's my take on this. You, no one's going to, you know, like I said, I've said this before. We said this last week. You know, when, it, when you got into a Friday, nobody's going to step in on the other side of the market, uh, you know, and step in front of the train. We talked about this last week with, with the dollar cat, when the dollar cat was making these highs, and we talked about, I said, "Hey, look, this is this looks like it's going to be a nice fade here, but you know, don't go in and step in and, and be a sacrificial lamb. Just wait for Monday to come in, and we'll set ourselves up with with the move uh, to the downside." And we saw that that move that came into fruition because I was looking for the uh, crude oil to go in and bottom out at that 78%, which was uh, 46, I think it's 46.73 was the 78% of uh, 4241 to 62.58. So it's basing it on that. Obviously, we probably quelled the selling in crude, and I thought we'd get a better bounce, but it was enough to put the dollar cat under pressure. We did see a nice pullback. Although eventually I thought we'd even pull back at least down to 28.25. So right now you're going to have to go in and keep an eye on how this bar is setting up because we are up here at this pre-weekly level and the market's kind of running a little bit out of gas. Now, crude oil remains under pressure, but I told you is that, uh, you know, I, I like the, you know, the dollar cat going higher, that's fine, but I, I'm not sure if we can take another leg lower in crude, and I just think that the market's a little bit overdone here. So if we do go in and see this pullback, then I really wouldn't expect the market to find any real semblance of support unless we go sub-28. sub, tw sub That's where you'll find the market. I, I believe the market will have to go uh, work a little bit lower to work off this overbought, especially if, we, if this plays out with, uh, and we go in and break beyond 29, then that's going to set itself up for uh, a, double, a double top. Uh, at least on a very short-term basis. So getting back here to the Aussie dollar, this thing has been in a downtrend for so long, and here it looked like we had a little bit of hope here. You know, the market had, had based itself here. We had broken to new lows beyond 73.84. We got down to 73.50. There was some key weekly support. And we'll go and highlight this a little bit. And the market looks set to go and move higher. And we're looking for a move up here. The market ran out of gas, uh, but we're looking for a move eventually up here to the 7483. But 
that's bad news here on, on their economic front, everything that was happening with China, and basically that took the legs out of the stool, and or kicked the legs out of the stool. And at this point, there's just no reason to step in and buy Aussie dollar. Uh, and then when you look at uh, what's happening in copper, what's happening in gold, what's happening in iron ore. Now, iron ore has gone and bounced back a little bit, but it's bounced back, it's bouncing back from the basement. So it'll be a while before we can see the Aussie dollar try and work a little bit higher. And then on top of this, this is on, on the backdrop of the Fed uh, potentially raising as early as September, but I really don't expect them to raise until October, but we'll see how that all plays out. That being said, that's the environment that you're in if you're trying to go in and buy the Aussie dollar, and I just don't see where you'd want to go in and do something like that. Sometimes people will say, you know, it's so oversold that it's such a good deal, i got to step in now. You, you need to go and wait till the momentum turns around. And, and, you know, you see a lot of good two-way action when you're trading, let's say, here in your dollar. You see, you know, good two-way action. One of the things about the Aussie dollar is that it's a very trending market. Once it gets going in one direction, you can see here, it generally gets going in one direction. I have to go much further back to show you some of the moves that we have. But you can see here when the market had gone and topped out here, this is when we started having problems with iron ore. And if you remember uh, back through this whole area, it was just bad news, bad news for iron ore all the way. And then we're looking for a bottom. And this was actually, it was the last week of January. I remember I was sharing some stories about iron ore. And so it was looking like potentially we could bottom. And we did get a little bottom, but it wasn't even much of a, of a bottom. We were able to rally about 300 pips, and then the market started sliding back down. But you can see that one thing about Aussie, it's a very trending market. And so there's no reason to go in and step into Aussie at this point until you start to see things turn around here. There's just, just no sense whatsoever. And you can see the trend just, you know, continuing lower. And this is more, and this is really uh, the personality of Aussie, is that uh, once it gets going in one direction, it just doesn't turn around. It's just like a, like an ocean. Uh, I compare it to, analogize it to, you know, uh, an ocean liner. And you just don't turn an ocean liner around very quickly. It can turn, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. And so... I just don't, I, I track it just to keep an idea of it as a commodity currency, but other than that, nothing else. It's the same thing I'll, I'll talk about here with the cable. Cable's kind of sitting over here doing a whole bunch of nothing. We did get a very nice signal, and we pointed this out yesterday, a very nice shooting star here, and we were almost made it to the 61%. So you had a, a good opportunity right here to go and do something with the, with the, with the uh, cable. But one of the things I don't like and, we, and other people have talked about it. they have a hard time trading the cable, is I don't like the way it, 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 it just uh, is not able to go on and set up any kind of a trend, even on a very short-term basis. When you, you know, and I'll give you an example here. You know, look across several markets here. So when you look at the euro dollar, you, you see some very nice moves. You get a great two-way action in the euro dollar, but I'm showing you here with the exponential moving average. You know, we get this buy signal here. Very nice run up here. Same thing on the sell signal on the downside. Very nice run. Same thing here. I mean, once you get the market gets going, and it's a very short-term trend basis because this is a 30-minute, but as I told you, I look at two-hour, 30-minute, five-minute, and I scalp, scalp a lot uh, and uh, day trade. And then here, uh, we highlighted this yesterday because I think this is one of the most powerful signals that I ever see when I use my exponential moving averages, where you get a fake out, you get the buy, and then it flips to sell. And we discussed that yesterday, and you can see here where the market remained lower throughout this whole time. So yesterday, we go and get a buy signal, and obviously the market goes and works higher. Okay, so nice read. So let's go and move in here to dollar CAD. Same thing. Sell signal here, nice move, same thing, buy signal, a little bit jagged, but still, you came out okay on the market. Same thing, you get this little bit of a fake out here. Same thing as this, we get the sell signal. Very nice run, a little bit of chop here, but once again, overall, and like I say, I don't use this as an outright buy or sell signal. I use this in confluence with my levels and, and fibs and what my perspective is on the market overall. 
so let's go on and move in here to the dolly in same thing very nice calls here we get into the sell mode you know you're going to be want to be short this market very nice rise same thing on the buy you know once, once again everything you, you you're getting rewarded when you go with this direction now let's go on and move into cable and this thing is one freaking mess look at this it's just it's just a mess look at this it's all over the place. This why I don't like to trade cable. And people trade it and they get chopped up. I don't know, maybe they got some kind of complex or something. You know, you know the thing is is, you know, once I stick my head in the grinder a few times, I know not to stick my head in the grinder anymore. But some people they just can't help themselves from people on trading cable. I don't like cable because I don't like the way it trades. It doesn't it's all over the place. You know, I can see if this was kiwi, but I'm saying this is all over the place. Now it doesn't move in gigantic moves, but there's no there's no rhyme or reason to this junk. And I'm not going to trade something like this. I don't have the time. I'm not going to waste my energy trading a market like this. That's why I don't want to trade cable. Even here on Aussie dollar, junky old Aussie dollar. At least it 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 gets going. It'll establish a direction. And this is a market that, and like I told you before, I said uh, early last week, I said it was going to be dead money because I said you'd probably see a trade in a hundred pip range over a course of a week or so, but it wasn't going to be doing anything. But even then, you see, and like I said, we talked about overall, it's a good trending market. What I'm saying is, is on a very short term basis. But uh, like I said, that's why I don't trade cable. And I like to, well, uh, you know, I'm not a big back testing kind of guy, uh, but what I like to do is, uh, and we can see here that the your dollars fade a little bit here. I told you I got short at the 38 percent. It's just a scalp. I'm just looking to go in and grab a little money uh, ahead of uh, the um, uh, which we'll call ahead of uh, employment uh, cost index. Not, nothing, nothing great. So and we got some support here at this 74. We just tagged it. So, uh, but like I said, uh, that's why I don't like to go in and trade cable. I like to have something that's going to go and move that you give a little bit of momentum, even if, you know, on a day trading, day trading perspective. Uh, Blake should be coming in. And uh, Lewis says, what are your favorite currencies to trade? They're the majors, uh, primarily your dollar, dollar, CAD, dollar, yen. Um, I never, rarely ever trade cable. Uh, and I haven't done anything with Aussie Dollar in quite a while. So Blake should be coming in. Let me just go on and get ready for him.